I am that I am, Adamus of Sovereign Domain, Adamus, a master among masters. Ah, I've been waiting a long time to say that. <laughs> no longer the teacher, guide at times, a mirror at times, but no longer the teacher, just a master among masters. Let's take a good deep breath. What an amazing, amazing time. Oh, Calder is telling me not to say amazing anymore, but there is no better word at this moment. So it begs the question, what is a master? What is a master? You've had a lot of notions and concepts and beliefs. You've looked at others as they might be masters. You've had examples in the past, hundreds, thousands of years ago, of supposed masters. But what is a master? Master is one who is conscious of their consciousness. They are aware. That's pretty much it. Pretty much it. They are aware. We could throw in a lot of other words, enlightened and everything else, but it's really the awareness. Most humans, they know that they are living, even though they're desperately trying to have feeling in their life, life in their life. They know they are living through their suffering, through their lack, through the things they don't have. Oh yes, at times through uh, romance and love and accomplishment, but mostly, mostly they are not aware of themselves. They are not conscious of their consciousness. Indeed, they get up in the morning and go about their Routines, routines that have been very deeply programmed in, but never, if very seldom, do they stop and say, Ah, I exist. I am. I am. The Master. The Master knows they are conscious, conscious of their consciousness. That simple. A simple, simple awareness. I am. I exist. Here I am. Nothing else matters. Not what came before me. Not what happened in another lifetime. Not what happened yesterday. doesn't matter. I am in this moment. That's a Master. And how good it is to address you as Masters. And the first thing I would like to do in our new journey going forward is Absolutely release any concept, notion, thought, belief that you had about what a master was, because it came from the old mind, it came from old uh, archetypical energies, old examples, mentors. That's not what you're going to be. You're not going to be like Yeshua. You're not going to be like any of the other masters. You are the new energy masters. And even if you don't feel that way, right now, even if you have doubts and are questioning it, even if you're thinking, well, maybe I'll get there. Maybe I have a little bit of Master. Maybe I'm 42 percent Master right now. Fake it, like I said. Just act it, because there is, a, there is an energy dynamic associated with consciousness that moves the energies, aligns it towards you. You just start acting like a Master. You start acting in consciousness, and then it's there. First thing I would like to do is let's release any previous concept about what you thought a Master was, because it's not going to be that way. It's going to be very, very different for all of you. Your concepts of a Master came from uh, an older place, came from a mental place, and came from a place of power, all of which we're going to leave behind. So please do take a deep breath as we go into the release of mastery. Everything that you thought a master was, let's leave it behind. Every imagination and dream you've had about what mastery was, every concept 
every thought about masters. Let's wipe the slate clean, absolutely clean, right now, and not try to fill it with anything other than what comes naturally. Take a good deep breath and feel into that. How do you release that which you thought was a master? Well, you just do. I call it just going to that next point. Yo soy al punto. I am the point. The minute you choose it, you become it. Yo soy al punto. I am this now. You don't think about how you're going to get there. You don't wonder if you got there. You don't question if it's of value getting there. You don't wonder if you have the capability or the talent. You are soy al punto. I am that point. I become it. So we just become the release. Ambro, we have a competition going on here. And by the way, the appropriate answer to the truths of truths is I exist. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, Chambra, I exist. That is the original truth. I exist, therefore I am. I exist. Nothing else matters. Everything after that, everything after that is either another truth, but not the core, or a mistruth. From the simple words, I exist, come all truths and mistruths. I exist. That's what you felt. When you left home, the loving, comforting home of spirit, went into the darkness, went into absolute nothingness, and said and felt, I exist. I am that I am. Nothing else matters. There is no other truth more important than that. Everything else either turns to mock you, or everything else is simply supporting that truth, I exist, nothing else matters. Do you realize the significance of that? I exist. Therefore I can create. Therefore I can live. Therefore I can be. Therefore I can feel. I can be sensual. I can have joy. I can have sadness. I can have lack, and I can have abundance. I exist. Do you realize? Do you realize how profound that is? I exist. That's it. So, Zuntai. That's all that matters. There is no other philosophy. There are no other books. Everything, everything that tries to explain it in detail is just machio, spiritual bullshit. I exist. That's it. Feel into it for a moment. You exist, David, Edith, all of you, Elizabeth, you exist. You exist not just as part of something. You exist as a sovereign being. You exist. That's all that matters. None of the rest of the talk about dimensions and time and space and the concept of God, which shouldn't be spoken anyway, your past lives, your future potentials, none of that matters other than I exist. This, this is what's special. Nothing else matters. When your physical body dies, you can still say, I exist. When you go traveling in the other realms, that will be the song that you sing, I exist and I'm aware of it. You see, there are, what, six and a half billion or more people on this planet right now. Do you know how many consciously understand that they exist? Oh, they live, they, they have their jobs, they have their families, but very, very few can stop for a moment aside from all the religious garbage, aside from anything that's happened in their life, their history or anything else, just stop for a moment with that simple, pure truth. In the deep breath, I exist. I am that I am. That's what I am that I am means, my dear friends. Anything else is machio. I exist. I am. I am. Thank you. In your heart, do you know they are not? What you have to rely on is you, but yet unsure of who you are. 
still trying to find you in this endless sea of troubles, still trying to identify you, something that simply cannot be done. So you dive deeper. You dive deeper into you. And you come to the point of realizing that you is not who you thought you were whatsoever. The you that you have known was simply a creation of a mind, a mind that was conceived here on earth, that was developed here on earth, refined and programmed here on earth. The mind, the strangest of all the aspects, not you whatsoever. So where do you find you? Certainly beyond the mind, even beyond the heart. You find you in those darkest hours that you've had, those dreadful, horror-like, nightmarish, dark hours that you've had. Each and every one of you have had them, those dark hours when you know There is no going back to the world of the blind and the unaware. Those dark hours when you wonder, who am I? Those dark hours where you wonder, to be or not to be, should I I terminate this? How can I release myself from this trap? How can I release myself from this mental anguish and this physical pain and this lack of knowingness? Those dark hours when you come to the deepest, the simplest, and the truest of truths, the only thing that matters is I exist. That's it. I exist. And from that simplest, most truthful of places, a place that defies the mind and even the heart, a place that defies all of your previous experiences, any beliefs that you ever had, anything that you thought to be good or bad, real or unreal, this place of I exist, the simplest of all truths, is where you find you, not surrounded by anything, anyone else, not confused by the world of the blind, not confused by the world of your mind, or your desperate attempts to save an identity of yourself. In that simplest of places I exist is where you start to hear the beat, the rhythm of your soul. I exist. Therefore I am. It's all that matters. All that matters. To be aware or not to be aware, such a torturous question, such a torturous middle land you find yourselves in. But, my dear friends, you feel, you have felt, even if it is only for a moment of time, you have felt there is something deep within you, something that doesn't rely on any other human, something that doesn't care about your past, your health, your intelligence, your looks, or your money. I've been aware of a few times of that existence of the Self. Sometimes it is but a fleeting moment and then disappears back into the darkness, into the abyss. But you remember, it was there. It's always been there. It never goes into the darkness or into an abyss. It is never lost. It is only you, you, still in the world of the blind, still in a type of hypnotic living, still wondering how to make yourself better, how to make yourself perfect. It is you that actually goes back into the darkness, because the existence, the I Am, is always there, always waiting, always knowing. It does not care if you go into your own personal crisis, into chaos, into crash and burn. It does not care, because it knows you are always there, the I Am. It does not care 
if you were a queen or a king, or if you were the richest being in all the world, it does not care if you succumb to the demons and the dragons of yourself or the others in the blind world around you, because it's always there. It doesn't care about good days or bad days. It doesn't care if you drink too much, smoke too much, sleep too much, or eat too much. It does not care. It does not care if you are having emotional difficulties with others, if others are using and abusing you. It does not care. It does not care one bit about your spirituality, about your religion, about your beliefs, about your affirmations and confirmations, or any of your illusions, because it is beyond illusion. It is. It is your existence. It's there. You have touched upon it. Perhaps when you were very young, perhaps that's what set you off sailing and searching to find how to bring it into this reality, how to bring it into your life. And although your mind has tried to take this, the simplest and most joyful of all consciousness, tried to take it and mold it to this world of the blind and the unaware, take it and mold it to what it feels its extra identity should be, it will never, ever, ever be captured by the mind, by the human identity. It can never be corrupted, destroyed. It can never be put in front of or behind anything else, including spirit. It's always there. The existence. I exist. Never forget this. Ever, ever, ever. Never forget this. In the darkest moments and in the most joyful moments, take a deep breath. I exist. It is the truth of truths. It doesn't take anybody else to bring that into your awareness. There's only you that can do that. There is no power in it, no power whatsoever, no energy in it whatsoever. It is not surrounded by anything. It is unto itself. It is not glorified by God. It is not pampered to by the angels. It does not exist in time or space. It is the existence, the I am that I am. Take a deep breath, my dear friends. No, no game shows today. No game shows today. I am that I am, Adamus of St. Germain. And I smell coffee even before I open my eyes. Ah, ah. Thank you, beloved Sandra. Thank you. Welcome to your Chambra. Welcome, Chambra, all around the world. Everyone gathered here in the studio. Before we get into the regular part of our gathering, I do want to acknowledge to each and every one of you in the most heartfelt way that I understand how difficult the journey is. I truly do. It's amazing. It's so profoundly gratifying that you're here, that you're with us. It's difficult. The energies, the consciousness of this planet, your work that you're doing with your aspects, how you're somehow, somehow managing to juggle everyday life, relationships, the challenges of a changing planet, your bodies, how are you able to do all of this and to be so committed to your embodied enlightenment, to your realization, sometimes brings tears to me, to Bias, Katumi, and all of the others. Amazing. I sometimes 
feel that you don't really understand what you're doing, the extent of what you're doing, changing consciousness, allowing your enlightenment to dream of a thousand and more lifetimes occurring right now in some of the most difficult, challenging, but beautiful situations. Enlightenment by itself is brutal. It will take every part of who you thought you were, and it will pulverize it. It will tear it to pieces. Enlightenment is not a friend of the mind whatsoever. It will get inside you. It will get inside your thoughts. It will get deep into every crevice every shadowed corner, every locked door of the mind and of the memories, in order to cleanse it and free it. But it is the most challenging experience to go through. Being in this state of mastery, beyond awakening but truly now into your mastery, will cause you to lose all sense of identity, self-worth, balance, everything. It will get into you. But somehow you're staying committed. Somehow you're staying connected with yourself. I know there are so many nights that I work with you, and I see you often trying almost desperate techniques, trying to get yourself back together. I see sometimes a tremendous amount of mental force using sheer willpower. I see you using these to try to hold it together. And the one thing I'll tell you, and I do tell you in our nocturnal gatherings, is don't try so hard to hold it together. It's falling apart for a reason. You will still be here when everything else has fallen apart. You'll still be the true I exist, no matter what. But all of the other parts and pieces, they, they come down. It's part of an evolutionary process. It's part of a discovery process. When you're looking for that thing to hold on to, to keep your balance, to keep from going crazy, I know what that feels like, to feel like you're falling into the darkest, abyss of all, You're going to lose every part of yourself. The thing to do then, which is perhaps counterintuitive, but the thing to do then is to allow, is to allow. You're allowing yourself, your spirit, your I amness. When you try these other things that you sometimes do, you try to hold on to clichés, you try to hold on to old identities, things that might have even worked in the past, it creates a resistance, which makes it even more painful. It perhaps satisfies the mind for a moment and a part of you that thinks then you're doing something. But if you want to do anything, just allow. You're allowing you, your divine, your true nature. Yes, there will be times when you get that awful feeling of losing everything, falling into that darkness of nothing. But my friends, you emerge from that in true, full awareness of the I Am. It's not a philosophical statement. It's not some spiritual cliché. It is you. And know we gather like this, I distract. I've heard that I provoke once in a while and annoy, <laughs> that I intentionally run some out the door. I admit I'm guilty of all these charges, and more that you're not even aware of yet. <laughs> but the very fact that you're here, you haven't left, you haven't given up. In a way, you can't give up. You can't turn back, and I know most of you have tried. <laughs> two, three, five dozen times or more. And I know part of you is saying, what have I done? Why can't I just go back to normal? 
but normal isn't natural. You can quote me on that. That's a good T-shirt. <laughs> normal is not natural. It's not your true state of being. You're evolving. You're coming out. You're realizing. So when we gather like this and we do our laughter and we do our provocations and distractions and everything else, I do acknowledge, I do truly honor each and every one of you. It's difficult. Do you realize how few humans on this planet right now are in a truthful allowing of their self, of their spirit? Well, there's many who are playing spirituality or religion, many who are philosophical, but truly here for their enlightenment, not many, a, a, a small handful all across the world. But it doesn't take many. It doesn't take many. It's that popcorn effect. And you're in the midst of popping, going from being that little kernel of corn and do a full-blossomed, delicious I am. So now with that kind of heartfelt, mushy opening, <laughs> let's get back to Adamus. <laughs> let's take a good deep breath and get back to our standard fare. The only truth, the only truth is, I exist. I am. That's it. That's the only truth. Everything else is a concept, a creative concept. I give attributes to my dear friend Master Ramesh for that. I modified it a bit, but the only truth is, I am. I exist. Everything else is a creative concept. It's pretty amazing. There are no other real truths. Yes, you can look out the window and see the trees, the buildings, the grass, other people. It's not really truth. It's an and truth, kind of truth, but the only real truth is I exist. I implore each and every one of you to breathe with that, to feel it, until it shakes you on the inside and the outside, until you have that aha moment until you get it. It's not just a few words, I exist, but it is the knowingness. It is the realization, I exist. I exist always. When you're falling apart in your human ways, when your mind is totally going into chaos, none of that matters. It doesn't. I exist. When you worry about death, when you worry about what comes tomorrow, when you worry about how you're going to make a living or pay your rent or any of those, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. I exist. That's why I can laugh about death. First of all, I'm dead, <laughs> by human terms, but more alive than most humans I've ever encountered. That's why I can laugh about death. It matters not. Do you realize when a master can go beyond the worry of death? Ah, everything else is so easy. And there's a fear, well, if, if I accept death, there's a fear that then suddenly it's going to be at your doorstep. No, not necessarily. Eh, sooner or later. But really, do you want to hang around uh, forever, forever? No, no, no. But when you go beyond the worry of death, you have conquered one of the biggest demons in any human. When you realize that I exist, when you realize you are going to exist on and on and on and on, then, my dear friends, so quietly you walk, <laughs> but so much noise she makes. <laughs> when you realize the I exist, you don't worry about these things. You don't worry about the next meal. You don't worry about any of that. Suddenly you change your whole energy dynamic and everything is there for you. Everything. I exist. So simple. So very simple. 